In this video, we are going to look at outline of the course. So the first introduction of bug bounty platform. We will look at the websites which provide bug bounty programs and we will see how you can start with bug bounty programs. Then we are going to set up our lab. We will install our own web application on which we will understand and learn the security issues. Then we will cover topics like local file inclusion, remote file inclusion, unrestricted file uploads, tab napping and many more. All the topics that we are going to cover will be explained with demo and also with real life reports. I'll show you real life reports and the bounties that are rewarded in return. And after the completion of course, I'll tell you how will you enhance the topics that you learned in this course. I hope you will enjoy the course. Hello everyone. If you are curious to know what are the security bugs in a web application and how security researchers slash hackers making money by reporting it to our respective companies, then you are at the right place. This course is all about bug bounty or you can call it how to earn money through finding security issues in web application. So the first question is what is bug bounty programs? In brief, the bug bounty program are the programs in which companies or organization invites the web application security researchers or hackers to find the security bugs slash vulnerabilities or security issues in their web application. And when they report it to the company, the company rewards them with some bounty or some other stuff. And that's how both get benefited. And there are some examples of rewards like this t-shirt. This t-shirt is given by Dutch government in their bug bounty program. And it says I had the Dutch government and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. The another t-shirt is given by Sony in their bug bounty program which says secure at Sony. And there are many other companies or organization who gives t-shirts, hoodies, etc. in their bug bounty programs. The another type of reward is a hall of fame. In this type of reward, the company have a dedicated web page which shows the faces or profiles of a security researcher who helped them in being secure. The another type is the money. If you do not know what is this, this is the HackerOne web page. I will tell you later what is HackerOne. So you can see here the bounty of $1,120 is given by Twitter.com to this person. So this was very little introduction about the topic bug bounty. In the next video, we will see the outline of the course. In this video, we will look at the platforms where you can find bug bounty programs. One of the popular platform is HackerOne or in short Edge One. As you can see, this is the website where anyone can create an account and start with bug bounty programs. So as we click on this tab for hackers and go to program directory, you will see a lot of programs. As you can see here, there are also big companies programs. Minimum bounties are also mentioned. There are also some programs which do not provide bounty but gives point in return and points are beneficial in hacker one. So here is Yahoo, Uber, Twitter, Adobe. Let's click on one of the program and see what are policies. So here is Yahoo's bug bounty program and you can see policy are mentioned here and there is a lot of things in policy. The first thing is Yahoo bug bounty program rules then reporting rules then in scope domains and properties this means what are the domains that are in scope and here out of scope domains that means what are the scope that are not eligible for bounty or that are not eligible for even testing you can also see findings not eligible for bounty this means these mentioned bugs are not eligible for bounty if you report them they will not give you bounty and there are also rewards and legal the thing is you have to read this policy before starting your quest for bugs 
you should read this policy for every bug bounty program that you are going to participate in the another famous platform is bug crowd you can explore it by yourself and you can also create an account on this and you can also use google search to find some isolated bug bounty programs too so this was a very short intro about bug bounty platforms thank you and have a nice day in this video we will set up our lab so that we can learn and understand the security bugs the first software we need is zam ZAMP help us to create our local host on which we will run our own website for learning. If you already know how to run local host then you can use your own familiar software. So let's download the ZAMP. First go to google and type XAMPP or go to their official website which is apachefriends.org. Now on this website you'll see the download section for different operating systems. Here it is for Windows system, for Linux system and for Mac system. I'm using Ubuntu which is a Linux distro so I will click on Linux. If you are using Windows you can click on Windows. Let's click on Linux and a prompt comes in. So I already downloaded it so I will not download it now. If you are using Windows and you download the installer then you can run the installer by double click on it. Now if you are using Linux then I'll show you how to install it. Now go to your download folder where the file is, right click and open in terminal or open your terminal and change the directory where the file is located. Now type chmod to make the file executable. Type chmod plus x and the file name xampp here. Now press enter, the file will be converted into executable. Now run it with super user permission. So type sudo space dot forward slash and the file name. Press enter, enter your password and you'll see our installer on the screen. Now you can install it like a windows system. Click on next and install the software. If you have completed the wizard and install the software, now go to your computer and go to your opt folder. And then inside it, lamp folder and you will here find the files. If you are using windows system, then your directory will be C drive or any other drive on which operating system is installed. Inside that drive, you will find exam folder and inside the exam folder, you'll find htdocs folder. So this htdocs folder contains your web pages. Now if you are using your windows system then you can run your XAMPP by double click on its icon. If you are using Linux then you have to do some more task to run it. Right click and open in terminal or just open your terminal and change the directory by using cd command which is change directory. Now here type sudo for the permission of super user then press dot slash and name of the file which is manager hyphen linux hyphen x64 dot run this file now press enter and enter your password and you'll see the application now go to your manage servers and start your apache web server and mysql database fine now go to your browser and then type 127.0.1 slash as you press enter you will see xamp is installed successfully if you are running windows then you can double click on your xamp icon and you will find a prompt like this only or similar like this you have to start the services apache web server and mysql database for further videos so that's it for this video in next video we will install more software for setting up our lab thank you and have a nice day in the previous video 
we had installed Xam software. Now in this video we will install and set up dam vulnerable web application or in short DVW. DVWA is a vulnerable web application which is used for learning purpose. You can go to their official site which is dvwa.co.uk and you can download the zip file from there. Before downloading this zip file, we have to change the permission of htdocs folder which I told you about in the previous video. If you are using Linux, then we have to change the permissions of htdocs folder. So for that, we have to go to our opt folder and inside that lamp directory and in, so on the lamp directory right click and open in terminal or just open in terminal and change the directory by using cd command now right here chmod 777 and then htdocs this will change the permission of htdocs and now we can copy any file into this folder okay we have to take the permission of super user also so type sudo and then enter the password this is for linux user if you are windows user then there is no need of changing permission you can copy any file into your htdocs directory now permission is changed go back to your browser and then click on download section of dvwa now I'm using archive manager to extract the folder into the htdocs folder. If you are using windows, you can use winrar or you can just right click on the folder and extract it. Now go to your computer, then opt lamp and inside htdocs. Okay, now the files are successfully extracted. It's time to start our XAMPP. As I told you in previous video, how to start XAMPP. If you are using Windows, then you can double click on the icon of the XAMPP. And if you are using Ubuntu, then go to your LAMP folder and right click, open in terminal and run XAMPP by using this command. Now enter the password and XAMPP will start. On this, on this we have to start two services. First is Apache Web Server and the second is MySQL database. Now, now let's check whether localhost works or not. Okay, it is working fine. Go back to your lamp, go back, go back to your htdocs folder and then inside dvwa hyphen master. Go inside config and right click on config.inc.php.dist file right click it and open it with editor now change this dv password here this variable we have to change this from password to none we just simply cancel this out and then we save it by clicking ctrl s and rename this file also which is config.include.php okay now go to your browser and type 127.0.1 and then dvwf master and then setup.php you'll see this page here and go down and click on create reset database this will create the database now it will redirect to this page dvwf-master-login.php now you can log in by using default password and username which our username is admin and the password is p a s s w o r d which is password as you can see this is our dvwa which is a vulnerable web application on this we are going to learn many web application security bugs so you can see on the left side there are many bugs mentioned and we are going to learn most of this in this course in this video we will look at open redirect or unvalidated redirect or forward so 
the outline of the video is what is unvalidated redirect of forward. Second, demo of the unvalidated redirect of forward. And in last, real life reports and bounty slash rewards. So first, what is unvalidated redirect or forward? In this security bug, website redirects or send the user to another malicious web page which is crafted by an attacker so that user get trapped into a phishing type attack. Let's see the demo which will give you more clarity on the topic. So here I design a scenario of the unvalidated redirect and forward. As you can see, here is a website and this is the IP address of the website. So this website is nothing but it is a local host which is running on my computer. And this IP address of this website has nothing to do with the unvalidated redirect or forward. Just let us assume that is our trusted website and we use this website on regular basis. So here is a web page of this website. And you can see this web page saying this is my awesome page and here is a link which says click here to go to home page. As I click on this link, I redirect it to the home page. Let's go back to the awesome page. Now if I right click on the browser and go to view page source, I can see there is a dedicated web page to redirect a user from one page to another page of the website and this link is vulnerable to the unvalidated redirect of forward. Let's copy this link and paste it on the browser. This parameter redirect is taking the input and redirect the user from current page to the input page. Now in this web application if this redirect parameter is not checked properly then it is vulnerable to the open redirect and forward. So I am typing here another website for say www.google.com. If this page redirects me to the www.google.com that means it can also redirect a user to some malicious website which could be a phishing page. Let's click enter. As you can see it redirect me to the google.com that means it is vulnerable to the unvalidated redirect or forward. This is not only the parameter which is vulnerable to redirect. There could be a scenario where we enter username and password as soon as we click on login the web application redirecting us to the home page that means the page after the login. So there could be a parameter which is redirecting us after giving our username and password. So if we can find that parameter and we enter some malicious link then after user logged in it can go to another website which is malicious website. So now let's see some real life reports which would be helpful for us. Now as you can see this is a hackerone.com and this is an open report so anyone can view this report. Now let me show you this link. It is a vulnerable link it was reported and now it is resolved so it is no more reproducible. As you can see this is a maven link app.mavenlink.com and slash logout from mobile parameter is true and written path. So this written path parameter was vulnerable to open redirect. As you can see this person gives google.com and it redirect the user to the google.com. So it was vulnerable to open redirect and maven link solved it. Now here you can see the report and now it is resolved. Now the about bounty. So this person gets $25 from maven link for reporting this bug. Now let's see another kind of redirect. Here you can see this person reports to keybase. If I type keybase.io and after slash I enter some another website it redirects to me the another website. That means this was another scenario of the open redirect. Now let's see very popular website which is twitter.com which was also vulnerable to open redirect. As you can see this link httpdev.twitter.com was also vulnerable to open redirect. And as you can see it is resolved now and the bounty was of $1120. Open redirect bug for big companies could be very harmful. There are also some programs which do not consider it as a harmful bug. That's all for this video. Thank you and have a nice day. In this video, we are going to look at clickjacking security vulnerability.
So the outline of the video is first what is clickjacking, second demo using DVWA and at last hacker one support. So this is our OWASP page about clickjacking. So it says clickjacking also known as UI redress attack is when an attack uses multiple transparent or opaque layers to trick a user into clicking on a button or a link on another page when they were intending to click on the top level page. So explanation of this line will be clear when I give you a demo on DVWA. So for the explanation of what this OS page says, I will show you through DVWA. Although there is no module for clickjacking, but when you see this setup and reset database, there is a button for creating and reset database. So suppose this button is very crucial for us. If I click on this button, then our whole database will be reset. So whatever be the changes that we did will be cleared out. So this is very crucial button for us and we really do not want to click this button. So here I create a HTML page and in HTML page you can see I have used an iframe tag. And in that iframe tag I used an attribute source and the value is our setup page. So if I open this page you can see you can see this chance to win an iPod this part so th there are two pages the first page the inner page is DVWA page and the outer page is my own crafted page you can see here the another button which is click here so now go back to OS page and read it again click jacking also known as UI redress attack so what we did, we redress the user interface. When an attacker uses multiple transparent or opaque layers, as you can see there are two layers. The first layer is of DVWA and the another layer is crafted, specially crafted layer. The, now read it again, click jacking also known as UI redress attack. When an attacker uses multiple transparent or opaque layer to trick a user into clicking on a button or link on another page when they were intending to click on the top level page. So this crafted page chances to win an iPod and the button here this click here button so this is our upper layer the user intended to click on upper layer button but he will be fooled to click the lower layer button and and this way he will be harmed so this is the click jacking attack you can read on OWSP more about it if you are a web application developer and you want to know how to defend against click jacking here it is you can read about it here now let's see a demo so this is our dvw page in this page we have a setup button as i told you so this button can be very harmful for us because whatever with the changes we did in database will be cleared out if i click this button so what attacker did he create his own page and in that page he uses iframe and in that iframe he loaded the setup page and he also created a button which says click here using some CSS what he will do he will hide the upper layer button by changing the opacity so this is CSS property opacity and what it is doing it will change the opacity it will make the lower layer transparent let's make it for 0 0.5 and see what are the effects let's refresh this page and you can see it will get little transparent not fully transparent if we change opacity to zero you will see there will be no lower layer if i go up and i see chance to win an ipod if i go down there will be a button as a user i will think that it is a chance to win an ipod and i'll click the button but i am getting fooled by the attacker and the reset button will be clicked this way our click get hijacked the name comes click jacking this means our click get hijacked so it is click hijacking and that's make click jacking so let's try it so as you can see now I change it to 0 0.1 this is for showing purpose in real attacks uh, they make it to zero only so that the lower layer does not show but here for seeing the demo what I did is I make it to 0 
so as soon as i click on this button the setup will be reset so i clicked on it and you can see the database has been created i don't know whether you are able to see it or not because if i change the opacity again then this will be vanished let's let's do it let's do it again one more time by changing opacity 0.5 and i refresh the page now if i click here you can see the button if i click here you can see the lower layer button clicked and changes has been made so this is click jacking now we will see the real life report so this was the click jacking report reported to yelp and the report number is 214087 so this person reported to yelp and it was resolved and the monty was of hundred dollar so here it is tricking a user into unknowingly bookmarking unwanted business adding events to their profile they are interested in editing their star rating on reviews so this guy shows the yelp an attacker can trick a user into unknowingly click on this click on the button and can be fooled to do these three things and he was awarded with hundred dollar bounty the another important thing that i want to tell you is the click checking box is not acceptable by every bug bounty program before reporting them click jacking you must read their policy what are in the scope and what are not in the scope as you can see in this report 146948 zomato disclosed zomato closed it as informative you can see here zomato reply thank you for detailed report according to our security policy click checking won't be considered as a security issue we will try avoid this issue in future we are closing this report as informative so some programs accept this bug and gives bounty and some programs are consider who do not consider this as a security issue so this is it for this video thanks and have a nice day in this video we are going to look at a poc video which was reported to khan academy and in this poc video we will see a little bug which leads to click jacking attack if you haven't watched the click jacking video in this course then first go and understand the concept of click jacking and then continue with this video as you can see here it is a web editor on khanacademy.org where students learn html so as you can see the iframe is restricted in this editor because of click jacking attack so it says sorry but security restriction on this site prevent you from using iframe tags as you can see that to prevent click jacking attack developer restricted the iframe tag as well as embed tag and object tag you can see here when object tag is used this shows the restriction and this allowed the tag and same with embed tag but now the frame set tag and frame tag is allowed so developer forget to restrict those tags and those tags can be used for click jacking attack so when frame set and frame tag used as you can see the khan academy web page is inserted in frame so this was a very little bug which leads to click jacking attack and it was reported to khan academy now it is no longer reproducible so this could be an example of weak web application security thank you and have a nice day In this video we are going to look at tab napping security issue The outline of the video is first understanding tab napping using hacker one's publicly disclosed report and second poc video of hacker one report first what is tab napping tab napping is a phishing attack in which a new tab replaces the parent tab and instead of parent tab it opens a phishing page let's see a report it will give you more clarity on the topic so this is our hacker one report
and the report number is 280500. This is the tab napping report and it was reported to Infogram by this person Suresh. So the credit of this report goes to this person. Now let's see what is in the report. So details of the report is when you open a link in a new tab, the page that opens in a new tab can access the initial tab and change its location using the window.opener property. So if there is a link, see this, this is the anchor tag of the HTML and we are using here this target attribute and the value of the target attribute is underscore blank. It means it opened the link document in a new window or tab. If it is present here, then there are the chances of tab napping. So the point of this issue is whenever a person click a link and in that link, if a target attribute is used with the value underscore blank, then this vulnerability can arise. Let's see a POC video of this that will give more clarity. Here is a POC video also in this report. Let's download it. This is the video. As you can see, this is the website of infogram.com. In that website, we can create our own project. As you can see, this project has some video and we can create a link of that video. So this person added the text, added the text and create the link on this video. So the link of this video is added to its own server. This is the local server that he is running and this is the IP address of that server. So he pasted that IP address of his server and, and the index.html file contains this code. Let me show you the code. So this code, so the index file contains this code. What this code is doing, it is replacing the parent tab by this website which is httpattacker.com. It could be any site, it could be a phishing web page of the same website. Let's go back to video and play it again. So he added the link of his own web server which has index.html and in that index.html the code was there. He shows what this link look like. As you can see here this target attribute is used with the value underscore blank. So it opens a new tab whenever a person click on this link. Now as he click on the link you can see you can see this parent tab is replaced by attacker.com. So this was from this report and he reported to Infogram and this is resolved now. The another report is reported to Open Exchange and it is also resolved now. And the bounty of this report is $666. Now let's try it by ourselves. So I, so I have localhost and I copied this into a file and save it on our htdocs folder by the name tab.html. Now in my download folder, I created a web page tabnapping.html, let's see. And in this file, we have a same condition that I showed on your POC video. So let's open it with browser and see whether the tab napping works or not. So this is our web page which contains a link that says click me. I click on this link and this web page open and see you can see and you can see our original web page is replaced by attacker.com. So this could be a, some phishing page of the same website and a person can crap into the phishing attack. This is it for this video. Thank you and have a nice day. In this video, we are going to look at cross-site scripting vulnerability. The outline of the video is first what is XSS, then demo using DVWA and in last real life reports. First, what is cross-site scripting? I'll explain you while giving you demo using DVWA. So here is DVWA and let's log in using our default username and password that is admin and the password password. Now go to your DVWA security and change it to low. Change it to low. Okay. And now go to your XSS reflected. Now before starting what is XSS I want to tell you there are many types of XSS. XSS is a very wide topic and there are many types of XSS. So in this video, I'll show you only reflected XSS and I'll also tell you about stored XSS, but you can read more on OWASP. So let's go to reflected XSS and see what is XSS. 
so this is a website in this website a user can enter some data if this data is not sanitized properly then user can enter HTML tags and because there is no check on the input user provide website allows HTML tags that user provide if I use B tag this is bold tag which make a word bold if I say hello H E E L L O and I use this bold tag and I as I enter submit you can see this is default hello and this is hello that we entered and you can see it becomes bold so what happened website allowed HTML tag also and if some website allows HTML tags to be executed then there are the chances of cross-site scripting and why we call this reflected cross-site scripting because in whatever user input it gets reflected let's see what OWSP says so it is type of injection because attacker inject some script in which malicious script okay so a script that harms user in some way that is malicious script are injected into otherwise banning and trusted websites accesses attack occur when attacker uses a web application to send malicious code generally in the form of browser side script okay we will enter javascript also and that is browser side script okay let's see the page source so i entered hello let's enter something else say dwa and i submit so if i go to their page source and search for dwa here so this is reflected here hello dwa so if i enter some thing in bold that that is hello and if i go for hello hello here you can see i entered this this is a, as a whole and website allows allows me to enter html tags there could be a chances of xss now let's try to enter script one thing that i want to say if, if a website allows any html tag to be executed then there could be a chances of xss that is also known as html injection which is a different vulnerability so let's try with script now a script tag is used in html to run javascript so if i call a function which says alert hello and this will this will inject the script and you can see our alert box popped up and this is how reflected cross-site script works let's recall what i'm trying to say so if any website is reflecting some user input in their view page source and in that input a html tag is allowed or script tag is allowed then there is a chance of cross-site scripting and how is it stored different to them here if i refresh the page then the data input is vanished but in stored it get stored stored accesses can be found in some blog type of web application like this name message sign guest book you can explore it by yourself let's see some reports so this is the report that was reported to blockchain and bounty's rewarded was of $400 now let's see the application at this is vulnerable to reflected XSS slash HTML injection through the URL at the block index page. So here what is happening here. So whenever this person is typing something here after this 1160457, it is reflecting on the web page. So now he go to the page source and see how he can break the HTML tag and can start the new HTML tag and he was able to do that and he entered the HTML tags the another report is reported to gratipay and you can see the image file with an alert box so this was reported to gratipay the another report another reflected accesses report is on Vimeo and this is reported to Vimeo and the bounty was of $100 you can see he alerted the domain of the website so this is all reflected accesses
there are various type of exercises you can read about them and this is it for this video hello everyone this video is the continuation of xss video if you haven't watched xss video then go back to xss video and watch it and understand the concept so in this video the main goal is to understand that the xss bug is not only found at search bar only there can be many parameter in a website which could be vulnerable to xss so here i'm going to introduce you with open bug bounty which help us to understand what could be the parameters that could be vulnerable to xss by understanding the reports on this website so the web address of this website is www.openbugbounty.org now you can visit to their about section and understand what are their goals and what are the project history and other things also you can also create an account if you want to as you can see here it is that their security community help more than 1 lakh websites to be secure now if we go to the quickest patched section and click on this report this is already patched report so it is no longer reproducible but we are learning what are the parameters that can be access is vulnerable so we are going to look at the vulnerable url and you can see this is not a link of a some search bar you can see after this id id is equal to 13 whenever a user input something then it is getting reflected and because of reflection of the input xss can be triggered and you can see here a screenshot also which says openbugbounty.org you can explore this website by yourself and this will be very helpful for your xss bugs thank you and have a nice day In this video we are going to look at file inclusion vulnerability So the outline of the video is first what is file inclusion vulnerability second type of file inclusion vulnerability local file inclusion and remote file inclusion third the demo of both lfi and rfi using dwa and in last real life reports at hacker one also in this video i will introduce you with owasp which stands for open web application security project so the official website of owasp is www.owasp.org so here we are on the website of owasp OWASP is a project run by security community to help the web application developer in developing more secure web application by providing very useful information about security bugs or vulnerabilities. We will learn about LFI and RFI through OWASP website. So here is the OWASP page of LFI which is local file inclusion. So let's read what OWASP say about LFI. Local file inclusion also known as LFI is the process of including files that are already locally present on the server through the exploiting of vulnerability inclusion procedures implemented in the application. What are they trying to say is when a web application is developed in such a way that a file which is stored on local server is included using include function of the programming language or scripting language and when this include function is not properly implemented or the checking on this function is not done properly then attacker can take advantage of this function by including some other sensitive file located on the local server and attacker can read this sensitive file also this is all what they trying to explain you in this page there is also a page for remote file inclusion 
remote file inclusion is also the same the only difference is file that is included is on the remote server it is not present on the local server remote server means on the other website as you can see this link the file which is included is on different website if you did not get what i'm trying to explain don't worry i'll give you a demo of lfi and rfi which will give you more clarity so here is the owsp website you can explore it by yourself at some other time now let's see the demo of both lfi and rfi start your exam and run these two services apache web server and mysql database then go to your local host and start dbwa let's log in with username admin and password password see at your left section before starting with file inclusion we go to at dbwa security because we are at learning phase we are going to select low security on this dbwa click on submit and it will be submitted now go to file inclusion if you are seeing this warning then don't worry this is for rfi when we look at rfi we will sort it out so let's see what is local file inclusion now at this page you are seeing that there are three files which says file1.php file2.php and file.php if i click on file1.php i'll see a file which says hello admin your and ip address so this section is nothing but it is a file which is included in this dbwa web application so the functionality of the web application is this website is including a file which is stored at local server fine if i click on file 2 this section shows me another file which says i need a password 8 character long and so on if i click on file 3 then this web application is including third file so this section is nothing but it is a file which is included using some include function of the programming language and as you can see this parameter page parameter is taking input as a file name so if i say file2.php it will include file2 so this parameter is not sanitized properly in this case let's see if it can include some other sensitive file so for that for learning purpose let's go to our xam directory and in that xam directory we have htdocs folder and in that htdocs folder we have dbwa hyphen master so let's open text editor this is only for learning purpose so if i create a web page which says you should not read this file fine so if i save it on htdocs only by renaming it sensitive.php let's save it so i create a file create a php file which is a sensitive file this is only for learning and understanding purpose so say this is my local server and at this server i have a sensitive php file which should not be read by any other person now go back to your dbwa so using this parameter if i include this sensitive file then this file will be shown on the screen and this is a sensitive file this file should not be seen by every other person so if i enter dot dot slash this dot dot slash double dot slash means one directory back so if we are at this directory see we are at dbw hyphen master and inside that we have a directory vulnerabilities and inside that we have a directory fi so first go one directory back which is from fi to vulnerabilities then another directory back which is from vulnerabilities to dbwa master and from that directory we are going to dbwa to htdocs and in that directory we have sensitive page that we had created sensitive.php as soon as i click enter the file is included and it says i am a sensitive file and using this file inclusion i read the sensitive file so this is lfi 
Now if I go back to OWASP page, you can see it is not only limited with reading sensitive data. This can lead to something as outputting the content of the file, but depending on the severity, it can also lead to code execution on the web server, code execution on the client side such as JavaScript, which can lead to other attacks such as cross-site scripting, which we see in later videos. Now let's see a demo of RFI. For starting RFI, we have to first allow the URL include function. For allowing this URL include, we have to go to our XAMPP directory. Now if you are using Windows, then you have to go to your C drive or the drive in which operating system is installed and inside that drive there will be a folder of XAMPP and inside that XAMPP folder there will be a file php.ini and for Ubuntu users, we have go to back our LAMP directory and inside that directory we have etc directory and inside that directory we have a php.ini file. So we have to change this php.ini file. We open it with editor. If you are Windows user, please open this file using your notepad and search for allow underscore URL. As you can see, this is allow underscore URL include. So it is off right now. We will on it so that we can perform RFI. Now I have on it, save it and close it. There is one thing we also have to do in Ubuntu system is we have to change this php.ni permission. So for changing permission, we have to right click and open in terminal and type csudo sudo chmod triple seven and the php dot ini enter the password now this will change the permission and now we can edit this file if you are not able to edit this file then please change your permission of this file so please change the permission of this file and then edit the file now we have to restart our XAMPP software again. First stop the MySQL database service, then stop the Apache web service. We will start it again and then the changes will occur. Now refresh the page and you'll see the error warning gone. So for RFI, what we can do is for say we can include another web page which is not on the local server for say some Wikipedia page. So this is the Wikipedia page on RFI. If I copy this page and paste it here, this parameter, which is not checked properly. If I paste it here, then this Wikipedia page gets included in this page. So this is RFI, remote file inclusion, a file which is not located at local server, but it is located at some other remote server. We can include that file also. So this is the difference between LFI and RFI. So if I go to OSP RFI page, you can see here, this is a vulnerable host website and this parameter file is vulnerable. And here we input some malicious page, which is on some different website. So this is RFI. Now we will look at the real life reports of RFI and LFI. So this is the report with number 1675. Here you can see this is the case of local file inclusion which was reported to Yahoo and the bounty was of $1390. Although there is no detail of the bug but the concept was same only. Second report number is 59665. This is also a case of local file inclusion vulnerabilities in concrete 5 version 5.7.3.1 so this is also a report with same bug so this report at 183978 is the local file inclusion vulnerability report which was reported to US Department of Defense as I told you hacker one is one of the famous platform and you can see that US Department of Defense also have the bug bounty program on hacker one 
so this is great these are some real life reports you can also explore hackerone.com and can look for other reports present there so this is it for this video thank you and have a nice day in this video we are going to look at unrestricted file upload vulnerability The outline of the video is first what is unrestricted file upload, second demo by using DVWA and at last third hacker one reports. Start your XAMPP and run the services MySQL database and Apache web server. Then go to your browser, open your DVWA and change your DVWA security to low for learning purpose. Click on file upload and you will see this screen this is the page where person upload the file by clicking on browse and go to its own system i have seen this hundred of times on different websites now i will tell you what is unrestricted file upload suppose a web developer did not restricted on the extension of file that is going to be uploaded by user then this vulnerability arises for say this is a form to upload a picture and as we know the extension of picture can be gif or jpg or some other extension but what if i upload some code file for say code.php instead of image file if web application allowed to upload a code file then this is the vulnerable point if i open editor and write some html file which say I'm a code file not an image file let's save it on our download folder by extension code.html now let's try to upload it if the file uploads successfully then this is vulnerable to unrestricted file upload this is happening because web developer did not restrict the extension of file let's click on upload and you can see it is uploaded successfully so we know the destination where file successfully uploaded let's try to visit there as i click enter you can see the code is executed so this is the unrestricted file upload now what could be the impact of unrestricted file upload an attacker can upload a php file which is nothing but i shall give you a lot of functionality like seeing a file like creating a file like renaming a file editing a file so this could impact a website to be defaced an attacker can deface the website using this vulnerability also let's see how let's create a new file and start it with php So what this line is doing, it is taking a parameter cmd and executing whatever be the command is passed to this parameter. For a learning purpose, let's open a terminal. So this is the terminal. If I type ls command, then this will show me what are the files presented in the directory. So this is a command. Okay. So this PHP file is going to do same. Save it in our download folder and name it shell shell.php. Fine. Upload this file from upload section. Click on browse and go to shell.php and open it. Then upload. Because there is no restriction on extension of file, then this file will get upload successfully. Now it is uploaded here. Let's open this. Now give the command cmd is equal to ls. As you can see it will show the files which are present in the directory. Now let's go back to the upload file and let's create a file which say I'm a deface page and save it. Now again upload it because I make change in code file then I'll upload that code file again which is a HTML page. Open it and upload it now let's try to visit there 
see it is our deface page now the task is we have to copy this page from here to the main directory now whenever i visit dvwa it open their index page fine and this is our index page if I rename this deface page as an index page and I copy it to main directory then whenever we open this website the deface page will open and this is how a website get defaced. Let's try. So again shell.php command is equal to first of all I am renaming the file cpcode.html to code to index.php let's move this index dot html index dot php to one directory back which is from uploads to hackable then another directory back from hackable to dvw master and press enter now let's try to visit again our website and you can see the website gets defaced and this is one possibility of this bug so this is a very critical bug now let's see real life reports so this is malicious file upload bug and you can see through this link person able to upload a php file see the image it is calling a php info function which shows the configuration of php so this was resolved and was reported to square and bounties of two thousand dollar the another report is reported to informatica and it was also resolved and the third report is reported to Moneybird and the bounty is of $100. I hope you get what I was trying to explain. So this is it for this video. Thank you and have a nice day. Hello everyone. I hope you enjoyed the course. Now what's next? The concepts I told you in this course can be enhanced by reading more about the topics. So where you will find more information on the topics that were covered in this course. So the first source is OWASP. You can visit OWASP website and can read more about the topics. There will also more topics that are not covered in course and you can read about them on OWASP website. Second, H1 reports. You can read n numbers of H1 reports and you can enhance your skills. You can search for POC reports and videos on internet blogs and YouTube. You can go to YouTube. You will find many web application security researchers channel on YouTube and you can watch their video to learn. You can also use Google search to find n number of blogs where they write you can connect with community through Twitter. You can go to Twitter and search the community by hashtags like hashtag bug bounty, hashtag hacker one, hashtag bug crowd, etc. And in last, if you love reading, then you can buy ebooks or books at Amazon from any other website. So this is it for the course. I hope you enjoyed the course and do not forget to rate the course. Thank you and have a nice day.